You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Are you awake? <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. Glad you are now. My name is Paul. Welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. And my name is Rob. I'm definitely awake after that. And you're listening to episode number 543. Hope you're having a great, fantastic, get out and fly kind of week. Hopefully uh, the weather's calming down for you like it is for us here. It's been very, very nice. Digging the weather in New Mexico Love the right weather. now. What are we doing in here, Rob? I don't know. Let's finish these Talking episodes to the go for a hike. I got to finish these episodes and go to work, Paul. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Me too. All right. Well, on that bombshell, uh, <laughs> very excited. Very excited to be here. Guys, thank you so much for those reviews. Thank you so much for sharing the podcast. It really does make a difference. Also, big thank you to our sponsors, unmannedsas.com forward slash drone you again. That is unmannedsas.com forward slash drone you. Guys, if you don't know them, you should. Because if you ever break your drone for $29.95, you can send it to them, get it diagnosed. And if you want to get it fixed with them, they give you 20 of the $29.95 right back into fixing the drone. They're veteran owned. They're here in the U.S. What more could you want? Check them out. Unmannedsas.com forward slash drone you. Also... Rob has a very special thank you to our other sponsor, Charky. Oh, boy, do I ever. Never thought I'd like lamb jerky, but it is phenomenal. I love it. Relatively healthy. Very healthy. Uh, good protein. <laughs> relatively low <laughs> calories. Not a lot of sugar. It's good stuff. It is four ingredients mean it is simply delicious. Simply delicious, and there's three flavors. Salt and pepper, sweet and spicy, red chili. What's your oh. favorite? It fluctuates from day to day. <laughs> I think today I'm on red chili. My kids, guys, if you your kids, it's a great snack for your kids. Soccer games, whatever, it's a great thing to take for them. My kids love the red chili. And we're from New Mexico, so that makes sense because it's a little spicy. Good news, guys. But you they can, dig it. Yeah, I'm sure if you like spicy food, you can dig it. But if you're not into spicy food, don't try the red chili. But guys, if you want to try it, just go to Amazon.com and search for Charky or simply go to charky.love. Yes, that's C-H-A-R-K-I dot L-O-V-E and press enter in the URL bar and it'll take you right to Amazon. So anyway, guys, welcome to another show. Let's play that question because many people are wondering about the feasibility of the Inspire 2. Hey guys, thank you for doing this podcast. I have a Sony a7S II and a Phantom 4 Pro, and I want to upgrade to something more serious for my drone business, mainly to fly in higher wind so I can get no propellers in my frame, so I can use interchangeable lenses, and for the client perception. I'm wondering if you think I should go with an M600 or an Inspire 2. I'm leaning towards the Inspire 2, but from some of the reviews, it appears that it's kind of pointless unless you get the premium combo and shoot in RAW which is going to add a lot to my cost and to my workflow, which I'm not really trying to do. I do mainly real estate video, but some commercials and events. Um, thank you and looking forward to your answer. Great question. Very good question. Yeah, it is a good question. Is that an apt comparison, the Inspire 2 and the M600? Um, well, I think, you know, everyone thinks that the Inspire 1 is outdated, and I totally disagree. For client perception, when you show up with an Inspire, Rob, people are like, whoa, this guy must be a professional. He has yeah. a big drone. Like, oh, man, it transforms. Like, must be a transformer. <laughs> anyway, that's my geriatric impression. Um, that being said, one thing that I have heard recently being on set my last quote that was sent out to go on set i mentioned the inspire 2 and i got a very very harsh email back about why this particular company would not use the inspire 2 or hmm. hire a pilot with the inspire 2 interesting it is very interesting and it comes and this down, is a major company this isn't a small player no right? this is a very major three-letter network um they won't use the inspire to simply because they don't want to pay for the licensing to use the raw feature so what this last tv show that i did in fact doing another one next week inspire one raw 
Inspire 1 Pro Raw is what we're using. No one wants to use the Inspire 2. I will say client perception is important, but I would argue, Rob, that the footage out of the Phantom 4 Pro is so much better than the Inspire 1 Pro Raw because you can shoot 4K 60. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, guys, if... if, if uh, going back and forth to his original question of the Inspire 2 or the Matrice 600, I would not recommend the Matrice 600 to anyone for one simple reason. It's not that sensitive as a drone. It was, it, in my mind, it seems like that drone was a hexacopter created for noobs because you cannot pitch the drone forward and inject elevation or thrust. It just, the drone just elevates. So you, you can't like... You can't use a lot of torque or low end torque with this drone because it simply is pitch limited. Which is so is that what you mean by it's not a very sensitive drone? It's not a sensitive drone. You can't do a lot of good subject tracking with it. Like it's just not. It's not very maneuverable. No, yeah. you can do so much more with an Inspire One or an Inspire Two. So the M six hundred is off my list just completely right now because no. Also, it intimidates a lot of people. You go from client perception of wow, you're a professional to oh my God, is that thing going to kill me? <laughs> is there a gun loaded on that thing? But if you I've needed, had that question before. I would not doubt it. But if you needed to carry a pretty intense camera, an Epic or something, then would you go with the I would the probably M600? get an Alta 8. Okay, is that in about the same price range as no, the M600? it's about four times the price of an oh. M600. Okay. The reason is the same. Pitch limited with an Alta 8, I can carry a really heavy payload, but I can also move very quickly, and the M600 just does not do that. So what is the M600 meant for then, in It's your made for heavy lifting, but it's not made... It, in my... Uh, I would say that it's made for high-quality mapping because it flies really slow, it's super stable... Um, I've used the M600 for subject tracking, but I can put the Inspire to, you know, two or three feet off the glass of a car moving at 35 miles an hour. I can't do that with an M600. It just doesn't have the agility. Right. That's the word. Yeah. Agility, I mm -hmm. think, is probably the best word to use that for is, that. That is the better word for sure. But going back, for me, it's hard to give this guy a recommendation because the Inspire 1, yes, it, it you know, it is still the go-to for many of us on set. In fact, I still fly it. Every day, I love my Inspire One, um, but I as soon as the price comes down on the i2, I will probably end up buying one. But an Inspire One, you could probably get into for a couple thousand dollars at this point. Right? Yes, yes, he could, and he can also get a zoom camera. Mm -hmm. He can also get a camera that shoots raw. Um, but here's the thing: if he gets an Inspire Two with the X4S, he can shoot 4K 60 and still get great footage. Yeah. You're not going to have the ability to play with the footage like you would on with a raw camera. But the quality is so good. It's just the dynamic range, the contrast, the definition. And I mean like the pixel definition. Like it's just, it's incredible. So outside of the camera situation as it relates to the Inspire 2 versus the Inspire 1, are there other reasons to get the Inspire 2? Obviously agility relative to the M600, but beyond that. If you want the Z30 camera, which is like a 300 times zoom camera or whatever, you have to use the Inspire 2, if I understand that correctly. Okay. Um... But if you have, say, a Z3 camera, if you have an X3 camera, which, by the way, the X3 camera is my favorite camera for live streaming. Mm. If you're live streaming an event, it's one of my favorite cameras because you're eliminating variables. There's it's no, nice and simple. It's nice and simple. It's mm -hmm. always in focus. You can set your white balance. You can forget it. It's always going to provide a good, crispy image. Um, the Z3, there are just so many problems with live streaming and X5, I would never live stream with because it's too heavy. You don't mm -hmm. get to fly for that long. Right. So that being said, if here's the issue, Rob, for six grand, I can have an Inspire One Pro, all the batteries I need, a battery charger, the Z3 camera. So a zoom camera, if I'm doing inspections and if we'll say we take it for another 1500 bucks, I can get a raw camera. Mm. Now, at 10 grand, I've got the Inspire 2 with the same outfit essentially. With yeah, with the X4S camera, bunch of batteries, okay? Um, a case. The thing is is that now I'm at 10 grand. Yeah, it's a big difference. 
And are you really getting that extra value is the question. I don't see it. That's why I struggle with this podcast right now, because I don't see the extra value. Mm. And I don't see it, especially when I was told by an executive producer of a movie, we're not flying the Inspire 2. Even though you see, and there's this video of um, Sheldon from DJI flying an Inspire 2, and then some guy catches it and just walks it up to a character. And the scene is one, one scene like that. And um, I was I was on I was on the feed, and I said I just don't understand why they would catch the drone when you could just continue flying and still get that same shot hmm. and park the drone three feet from the actor. And then someone was like, "I'm not one for sarcasm, but I don't think anyone should fly that close to an actor." It's like, well, they're in the production. You are insured if you're doing a production to fly close to people. Yeah. You're insured to do that. And if you can't do that, then you shouldn't. Ugh. So, and if you're the actor. You better know that pilot. Very well. I mean, I've got to have confidence that that drone is not going to rip me up mm -hmm. if I'm that actor. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, so in this particular case, M600, Inspire 2, so it, even though you've got the licensing fee if you want to do the raw, that's the direction that you're thinking this gentleman should go. So I would nix the M600 from the comparison, just say forget it. Your okay. real comparison is do I get the Inspire 1, okay. save money, get the X5R, keep, you know, you can shoot raw without paying the extra money, or do you just get a basic Inspire 2, try to save some money, and you've got a 20 megapixel mm -hmm. um, camera. In which case you could fly the Phantom 4 Pro. And get the same quality. Not you don't have the the effect of the Inspire being there and yeah, credibility and, and, and all that stuff. Some but. people may say, well, the Inspire two has that twenty megapixel micro four thirds X five S R. Yes, but I'm not going to pay two grand to be able to use the extra files out of it. Yeah, yeah and no one gives a crap about five point two K. No, no one on set cares. So um, hmm. having 4K 60 is so much more important than having five K footage. I would say this: if the price went down on the Inspire two. This summer, I'd buy one okay, and and then start moving on from my Inspire one. But the Inspire one is still such a powerful platform for someone just getting into it, which is why I struggle. It's a difficult decision. I understand. But yeah. You All can right. still do so much with an Inspire one. Yeah. Well, I hope that helps, Colin. I, I, th I mean, I learned a lot, actually, and I think I know what I would do if I were in your shoes, understanding the little that I do know about what your uh, your situation is. So thank you. Mr. Thank you. Aiken. Thank, Thank you for the you. question. And guys, if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Get it in. If you haven't subscribed, please do. That helps us a ton. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your kids, anybody that you think might have an interest in learning from what we talk about on this podcast, let them know. We'd love to have them join us. And guys, seriously, thank you so much for supporting the show, supporting Drone You, and having the willingness to learn more. The community is growing at such a fast rate, and that's such it's just because of you. And we're very excited. We're very excited to release these new classes coming out soon. We're just so excited to be a part of this community that we've grown and, and fostered because it's because of you that it's so awesome. So thank you, guys. Anyway, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You.